Shabbat Shalom. This morning we have a special parasha, Korach, a name of the means sometimes sadness in the in the Jewish life in the Jewish community. This is an uprising against Moshe Rabenu and his brother Aaron, the high priest. And we all of us, we look and we read this this portion, and believe me or not, there are different views about this portion. Some of our sages, they consider that the, the Korach and Datan and Abiram were no good, and some others, they put it in a very special place, and they make it even almost righteous to what they did. And, and this is Judaism, you know? To use three opinions, that's nothing new for us. But we need to really, instead of trying always to be defensive, or, and the other ways also too, uh, we, we, we Jewish people, we have this sense of justice very strong in us, it's inherent in us. And sometimes also we are totally blinded by the underdog uh, idea. We are always fighting for the underdog. Doesn't matter how the underdog is, it's good or bad, but because it's the underdog we need to fight. We do not look objectively about who is right and who is wrong. Only this is small, this is, or, or this is the, the one suffering. I want to give you, I want to put you a very good example right now how it's happening in Israel. The division that there is in Israel about how you deal with the Palestinians, especially with, with Hamas. You know, there are groups in Israel, Israelites, who are talking, that are going against Israel himself. Because supposedly, these people are suffering. And this is when you have lack of objectivity and you do not see the problem for what it is. You know? People don't want to hear, for example, that Gaza, when was under Israel, was prosperous and was growing. And that was a beautiful city. Then, when Gaza was given back, to the Palestinian was taken by this terrorist organization called Hamas. And what it has done is incredible, ugly, ugly, where the people are suffering. Some of the people, not all, because they have their areas that you go there and it's so luxurious that you cannot believe. And you realize there is an exploitation of their own people. But at the United Nations, the European countries, they don't want to open their mouth. They are blinded because they want to accuse only Israel. This only one-sided is terrible. And this is what the, the complex of the underdog, you know? We are going to help supposedly the one that is more weak, the weaker side. And, and we do not realize that this is not what is happening here, but they don't want to see the truth. And there is no worse blind than the one that does, doesn't want to see. And this is what is happening. Here we are going to see a situation. Korach is a Levite, okay? It's from the family of Moshe and Aaron. Even they are cousins, you know? They're related to each other. Uh, and in, in the relationship, what is special is that Levi has three children, Gershon, Kohat, and Merari. Okay? Um, from these three children uh, comes the, all the family of, of, the, uh, of the Levites, and they are divided in four groups. No? The, the Gershonites, the Kehatites, and the, Mer uh, the Merorites. Now, from Kehat, it's going to take, Kehat has four children. And these four children are Amram, uh, 
Ixhar, Hebron, and Musiel, four children. From these children, the oldest one is Amran. And from Amran, they are going to have three very special children. Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe, in that order of birth. Now, interestingly enough, it's the creator who calls Moshe Rabbeinu to be the leader. And he's the youngest one. He's not the oldest one. Miriam is the oldest one. And then comes Aaron. And then he's going to make Aaron as the high priest of, of Israel. This is what we call a divine uh, nomination. It's the creator who decides in that way. Now, look at this. Korach is the oldest son of Ishar. Okay? Ishar is the second son of Kehat. Yeah, Amran is the first son. Uh, uh, Ishar is the second. And Korach is the oldest son. And who is named the leader of the Kehatites? No more and no less than El Safan. And who is El Safan? El Safan is the son of the youngest son of, of Kehat, Uziel. Okay, being the youngest one, is his name the leader of all the Kehatites? In other words, Looks like that Korach questioning sounds fairly good, you know? Okay, you, to the oldest son, you gave it the leadership of Israel and you gave it the priesthood. Now it's my time, my turn. I need to be the leader of the Kehatites. And who do you name the leader of the Kehatites? The youngest son or the youngest brother? That's not fair. How many times I heard that question, that, that statement? No? That's not fair. It's not fair because supposedly I own the thing. Then you have the other rebellion. Look like there are two rebellions. You have the rebellion of Korach, the Levite, the Kehatite. And then you have the rebellion of Datan Aviran and the, the Reubenites. And then from then, we can say almost the same thing. You know, they were the firstborn. Reuben was the firstborn. And you know, and the Reuben eye has been put at the end. They have taken their, the first uh, right, the Behorot, the, and they are no any longer the leaders. Something that they felt that they had the right to have it. Or at least that they thought that. Immediately, we think that this is injustice. In the modern world today, the type of government that is very popular is called democracy. You know, and this is the type of government in which supposedly the majority is the one that governs, or the majority is the one that has the last word. No? And believe me, you know, with this type of government, they usually what you have is a lot of injustice. And it's celebrated by everybody. Even there are some rabbis that they say that democracy comes from the scriptures. Totally the contrary. I disagree with that. In the scripture, they talk about theocracy. But you are going to see that how Israel, little by little, wants to be like the other nations. And he's going to copy other nations. And copying other nations, what they are going to do is they are going to leave out the creator, the Boreo land, blessed be his name, leadership to the people. And the problem today, and the problem during all the time that we are going to see about Israel getting in trouble, is exactly like that. My way, not your way. 
And that has become a problem to all of us. You know, I have been sharing with you, talking to you about, uh, uh, in many ways, the simplicity of the Word of God as His greatest constitution that He revealed to us and how He revealed in Har Sinai the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words. Those ten basic principles are in gold because those ten principles cover everything. Believe me or not. We in Judaism, we have added six, we have 613 misfots. But all of the rest, they have a relationship with these Ten Commandments or this an application. If we really follow these Ten Commandments, we will be in a better relationship with the Creator and with our neighbors and with the world than any other place. But what is happening? We as men, we are so smart that we do not need a, a, a divine leader. What we need is ourselves to lead ourselves and to be ourselves, to follow ourselves. In the half Torah of this week, we had a, a first Samuel in which the prophet Samuel, you know, is the, the one that is going to be literally forced by the people of Israel to anoint a king, a king for the first time in Israel that they didn't want to have a king, and he was really very reluctant, and he complained to the Creator. How are you going to do this? And the Creator said, go ahead, do it, because they are not rejecting your leadership. They're rejecting my leadership. That is the problem of humanity today. We do not want to be led by the Creator. We want to be led by ourselves. He has given us free will. And He has given us a word of wisdom. You know, if we were wise, we would follow the good advice. But no, we want to do our own things. Now, also to what is very interesting here, only a matter of sometimes curiosity is, is, is something good when you do a research. Uh, from the family of Kehat, you have Amram, Yishar, Hebron, and Uziel. Uziel is the youngest one, and Elisa Fan is the one that is, is the Nasi of the uh, Kehatites. Okay? But here, from Yishar, from Korach line, only to give you. You know who is descending of Korach? From Korach comes Asir, and from Asir comes Elkanah, and from Elkanah, Abiasaf, and down to the line, Samuel, the prophet. In other words, Samuel, a direct descendant from Korach. We can make a lot of pictures from this, and we can get some teaching, some principles. Not necessarily everything is wrong. Everything can be worked out, and we can come back to the Creator. Now, I've given you these short ideas. It's in order that we understand this, what Korach, what Atan and Abiram did was an uprising, a rebellion, was a coup d'etat. And they wanted to take over the leadership that the Creator has established. And they didn't have the right to do it, but they thought that they had it. And they went and complained. They accused Moshe Rabenu, literally of nepotism. You know? You have put yourself here, you have put your brother here. You know, it's all in the family. What about us? What about the rest? Who has put you above everybody else? And we look at Moshe Rabenu, and Moshe Rabenu, I always have called it the reluctant leader. 
reluctant because he didn't want from the beginning to uh, be the leader of Israel. He didn't have any desire. The first time that he intervened to try to help the, the, uh, the Israelites in Egypt, he got burned by his own people. First he defended and killed one of the Egyptians, and he was accused by his own people that he killed an Egyptian. And the, when he tried to defend, to separate two men that they were fighting against his, each other, you know, they told him, who has named you, you about us? Exactly the same accusation. Then Korach is telling him at this time. The same accusation. And according to a Madras, a Mirashim, you, we, we see that they say that Datang and Abiran were the two that were fighting. And they still had a grouch against uh, a Moshe Rabbeinu. Another thing that's here is very interesting. When the people do not like to change the status quo, when they are very good and they're very settled. Don't move my seat. There is a, another madras, another mira, in the Mirachin, and there, the story about uh, Korah. Korah was a very rich uh, man, and he got a lot of gold from the Egyptians, and he was the in-between, between the the, ferrets, the, the, the pharaoh and the Hebrews. And he was the one that will give the men, the Hebrew men as a slaves, you know, and, and work on that. He was the, the go-between. And he made a lot of money. And he was one of those with Datan and Abiran, according to this Midrash, that they were, they didn't want to leave Egypt. Why? because they were having a honky dory life. They were enjoying it, and they didn't care about his own people. This is very important. They didn't care about his own people. They only cared about his welfare. They were enjoying a good life, even though their own people were miserable. But they were okay. And here is going to come this word about demagoguery. You know, what was the problem with them? The problem thing is that they didn't want to be leaders to help the people. They wanted to be leaders for the sake of the status and power for them. Do you remember that has been sharing with you about the process of all of us when the Creator gave us the free will? You know, of she. The free will gives us the responsibility. Freedom me means that we need to be responsible. Responsibility is to know to act with the things that we have been given. We are responsible for actions that we take. Some religions. They, they use the carpet system to put all under the carpet and somebody else is going to pay for your own uh, wrongdoings, you know? Somebody else is going to die for your, for your sins. You don't need to worry about it uh, uh, because the only thing that you need to, do, to pronounce is a magic work and that magic work is going to take away everything from you. Well, but on the Torah teach you that the one who sinned is the one who pay for them, for their things. Nobody else. Korach start challenging the leadership of Moshe Rabenu. And Moshe Rabenu is almost appalled. He almost faint. He fall on his face for the accusation that they gave it to him. Like a, he was a, a hunger for power, totally the opposite. He wanted to leave the, the leadership. He didn't want any more leading these people. But he was constantly defending them 
even against themselves. And here, the behirah of chi, the free will, responsibility, comes one thing that is very important in all of us, our actions. And our actions, is, there is an idea of kavana. Kavana is the intention on what we do things. The question is, what was the intention of Korah and Tatan and Abiram to seize the power against Moshe, Ravenu, and Aaron, the Hakohen, the, the Kohen Hagadol. What was it, their desire? Was to serve Israel? Was to help Israel to be a better nation? To serve Israel to be more powerful? And, no. We see in the words of the Tan and Abiram, they themselves betray when they say, Let's go back. You have taken out of the land of who produce what? Milk and honey. The land of milk and honey. And you have taken us to the desert to die here in the desert. That is not a new accusation. Do you remember when they were going to just before to cross the, the Red Sea? The accusations are not new. But uh, let me ask you this question. What do you need in your life in order to know that the Creator is working with you? What do you need in your life to see His divine presence in you? Or you have been abandoned to your own? And most of the people think in that way. It's up to me everything. It's true that we have free will, but it's true also that we have a creator who cares about us. But what happened? Let me give you something more about Korah. I'm going to, you read the whole chapter. You know, they has a test. The first one is that uh, uh, they are going to put incense, no? And this incense in the, in the pants, um, we already had the, the situation with uh, uh, Abihu and Nadav and Abihu, the, the children of Levi, uh, pardon, uh, the children of Aaron, no, that were fulminated, you know? If they knew what happened to them, they will be shaking their pants, and then in this case, the robes, no? against to go and to do that. But they accepted the challenge. What is telling you about the psyche of these people? They were on their own. There is not higher power. How many people today, they do not believe in a higher power? And they act, and they do the life in the way that they want to until the consequences are destructive. The next step is they go and they die, no? They are in the fire. And they put, they put this, these pants in the, in, in the temple to show them what a, a rebellion can do. The next thing is about they are swallow. No? Now, there is a, a term in, in uh, rabbinical Judaism that we call it keneid migdal keneid. You know? When you open your mouth and accuse it the one, uh, one way, you are going to be accused by, by opening the mouth of somebody else. In this case, the earth open their mouth and swallow them. No. These illustrations, because the, the, the Torah is to give us pictures. It's not, to, no, it's not about to be literal, as many people want to make it literal, but it's about to teach us principles, that you're going to suffer consequences for what you do. You cannot go free. 
Next thing is, of course, she's going to invite Datang and Abirang. And these are the ones that they say, we don't want to talk to you. Moshe Rabbeinu is trying to make peace with them, trying to reason with them. But they are totally, totally blinded by their hate. When you are blinded by your hate, you cannot see. And here is something very important about Moshe Rabbeinu. Even that he start questioning about why the other people, he always was saying, it's the creator who gave me the power, it's the creator who decided, it's the creator who does it. And he followed the instructions of the creator. Everything was, you know, even with the, then later on, with the baton, with the, the rod, the, of the of the, the different lead, leaders and which was going to produce, were going to bud, to blossom. And the only one that blossomed was the one of uh, Aaron. What a better meaning to the rest of the people to see that. And what immediately the people does? They start complaining and accusing Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron that they are evil. The people. And they say, how you have allowed this to die? Let me give you a parallel right now. Okay? Just last week, in, in the Gaza border with Israel, the United Nations has punished Israel again. Well, not punish, has accused, they keep accusing, you know, for killing so many innocent people. The only thing that they were doing is flying a kite and burning all, the only thing that were sending bombs but, and they killing the, the soldiers, but no. They, they throw rockets, but they're innocent. Because the problem is Israel, you know? Then the world complains about Israel killing the innocent people. This is the same thing here, here we are seeing in Korach. The people of Israel are complaining to Moshe Rabbeinu their abuse of killing. And there is a play or open their mouths again. And with them because of the intervention of Aaron, there will be even more. Now, what do we can learn from that? Because to me, the Torah needs to be applicable today. We can know, we, we can look back the beautiful stories and beautiful things. But this is one of the things that you need to learn. There is always consequences when you challenge the creator in the wrong way. There are always consequences when you are disobedient to what is right. And by the way, he is what I'm sharing with you. Following the creator, we need to be moral, we need to have integrity. If we have been separated by him, one of his important morality and integrity. But we are going so far away from him that we become so immoral that sometimes even we don't care. Even if we know that we are doing wrong, we do not care about our behavior. And then what is the final punishment for the self-destruction of humanity? To come to the point that we cannot any longer distinguish between right and wrong. And totally the contrary. Most of the time, what we do is we make wrong right, and what is right, we make it wrong. That's the destruction. Then what we can learn from this story today, for us today, about Korach, about Datang and Abiram. 
in every place, in every community, always going to, you're going to have somebody who say, oh, I can do the work of that person that was doing there. What the person is, is there? Who put it in that place? I can do that too, you know? And the question it is, are you for that position? Do you want that position because you want to help the community? Or you want that position because you want to be insulted? Are you there because you want to serve the creator and the community? Or are you there because you want that people serve you? And this is the problem with politicians, demagoguery. These are people like uh, Korach, Datang, and Miranda offer the people a lot of things. They use half truth in order to make the, the most of the people think they are saying something right. Oh, sounds good in my ears. And they don't know that they are taking them to destruction. You know, to, uh, now it has become very famous about this fake news. 30 years ago, nobody was going to doubt too much about the, the news in the world. Among the journalists was some type of integrity. Today, they are sold out. Today, they according to their own ideas and their own bias. We see it constantly every day in Israel. We see about the journalists that go to Israel and the reports that they give to the world. They never say anything positive about Israel. Everything is condemning Israel. These people are sold out or their bias is so strong that they cannot see the truth. They are blinded. As our great teacher, our rabbi, Yeshua say, there is no worse blind than the one that doesn't want to see. There is no worse deaf than the one that doesn't want to hear. Who are you following? Are you following the creator? Are you following him? Or you are following men? Who do you believe? Do you believe the creator? Or do you believe men? This is what we need to be clear with ourselves. Are you want a position for you to be exalted, or you want a position to be a servant? What is your motivation? Because there's nothing more greater than to be a servant of servants. There's nothing greater than to, to be utilized by the Creator to do good to others. It's a greater feeling that anybody can help. But what about uh, the reason of you to serve, in quotation mark, is in order that your name appear there and everybody bow their head to you? What about that you are using many, many beautiful words from the scripture, on, on, on from beautiful things that mo move the heart of the people. And the only reason that you use those words is only to get the people on your side, and then you say, I got you. I always say this thing, and I finish. There are two types of leaders that you need to run away. The politicians that are crooked, and the religious people that are crooked because are exactly the same. They have one facade for the public and another for what they really are. I recommend all of you, I recommend myself, the way that you see me, that's the way that I am. Don't use two faces only one that the Creator has given to you.
Korach received what he needed to receive. Those one who were against the Creator suffered the consequences. And any time today, when you go against what is right and truth, you are going to suffer the consequences sooner or later. Shabbat shalom.